What is up, YouTube? This is Zach with Dream Media Home Theater, and I am out here all alone. All the boys are off. It's a Sunday, and I am going to knock this installation out with a couple of my contractors here. It has a, been a very, very, very long week. We're working seven days a week right now, but we are going to be doing today a 5.1.2 Atmos system up in this theater room. Uh, in this home behind me. We're in the Lexington country community here in Frisco, Texas. And I'm also gonna be doing an automation system with 30 Lutron dimmers and uh, three thermostats. And then we're gonna be doing some distributed audio as well. Speakers throughout the home, living room, patio, master game room, you know, just another, another day here at Dream Media. So uh, I'm gonna be demonstrating to you guys how we complete this work as well as uh, describing in detail uh, some of the installation procedures so that you guys can do this at home. I really do appreciate all of your support. You guys have been so, so um, supportive uh, with placing all your orders through us. We do appreciate that. I'm gonna continue to make these videos more and more informative to help you out so you can DIY it up at your home. Uh, or at least you know double check to make sure that it's being done properly if you are new to our channel make sure to hit that subscribe button down below and give me a big thumbs up we're going to go ahead and get all of our products unboxed and get this party started thank you for watching Alrighty, guys so whenever we come into your home we're doing the installation we do lay down a moving blanket for all the products we set everything down as well as, as well as we wear booties shoe covers just to protect your hardwoods make sure that they don't get scratched up or dirty next thing we're going to be doing is taking everything upstairs to the media room and we're going to get started on that first that's one of the larger parts of this installation all right guys so this is the room that we're working with this is the theater room Pretty decent sized space and it is pre-wired for us. So we have our terminals here on the wall. If you guys have a home and you see these plates, this is where the speakers are, speaker wires. So what we're gonna do is remove that plate, cut a bigger hole in the wall, insert the speaker in there so that it's nice and clean. So we're doing front left, front right, and center. Center is hiding out down there. And we're, all of those, we're gonna be using the 250 RPWs, reference premieres. Overhead, we're doing the Pro RCs. And in the rear of the room, we're doing the Pro RWs, all in wall recessed. All these are speaker wires, guys. And then there at the front of the room, we have a sub. We're using the SPL 120, 12 inch sub. Um, all the equipment is terminating over here in the closet. See down here. And this is what we're using for projection. We have the Epson Pro Cinema 4050. You guys see me use this all the time. This is a great entry level 4K projector. E Shift 4K. And we're going to be using the Dragonfly. In particular, the high contrast 145 inch screen. And Here's our models. These are the fronts, Pro 250 RPW LCR, the Pro 16 RCs for the ceiling, and then we're using these, the Pro 16 RW for our rears. And then there's some other small components too that I haven't listed off yet. <laughs> Bless you. Okay. okay guys, so once you pop your wall plate off, you're gonna see this. This is a blue, high voltage box that they typically use because you can nail it right into the studs. Now I typically will just take a flathead screwdriver and stick it into the box. If you feel a stud there, you know studs on this side. Stick it in over here, ah, no stud over there. It's probably the easiest way to guarantee that you're, you're cutting on the right side. And I even go to the extra extent to pop this box out. It only takes another minute yeah, and then once you pry it out like this, you can actually take your flathead down in the wall and just like make 100% sure that where you're cutting, there's not gonna be something in your way, like a cross beam or whatever, because you can then maybe go a little bit higher to avoid that cross beam. It only takes one minute to pop it out like that 
um, but I always like to go to that extra little step just to make sure. And I'll go over to the other side and do the exact same thing just to make sure that whenever I do cut them both into place that they're at the exact same height and it looks really good. So we're gonna do the same thing over here. All right guys, so cutout templates are supplied with all speakers, in-wall speakers or in-ceiling speakers. This is the one for the Pro 250 RPW. Grab your level and you're gonna line the speaker up right to the edge of the stud so that we're cutting the opposite direction cutting the sheetrock out and butting it right up against the edge of that stud so that none of this hole is showing. And you're just gonna put your level up on top like that. Very important that you use a level. And then you're just gonna use your pencil and you're gonna trace it out. All right, now that we have both sides traced out, we can go ahead and start cutting it into place. rock and you can throw that in a box somewhere and then as long as you have enough space in the wall uh, you don't really need to mess with the insulation you do want to remove this box though like that and go ahead and again get rid of this um, and then you got to strip back your wiring so standard in wall wiring is just 16-2 wire so you can take it with a standard pair of wire strippers. Strip back your outer shielding, like so. Get rid of that annoying string. And then you only need about a quarter to a half of the bare inner conductor, the, the stranded copper. Twist them together like this. And then you're ready for the speaker to actually put in the wall. All right, now this particular speaker, guys, comes as a two-part assembly. You have the back bracket piece here, as well as the speaker itself. And this is kind of an up close view of it. Thank you. Now, here's a little pro tip guys. These little uh, wing nuts here, they pop out into place like that and they grab onto the sheetrock, like so. Now, you can't do that whenever it butts up against the stud. So what do you do? Well, we've discovered that there's a little, little um, hack to that. Basically, you can go ahead and get this side secured onto the sheetrock, and then what you can do is take this side and drill a screw straight through the toggle into the wood, and it'll act as if it's holding onto the sheetrock. Pretty cool. I'm gonna grab a couple screws and I'll show you what I mean. We are about to get jacked. The customer just got us some espresso. We're about to fuel up and kick it into overdrive. You got Juan back here demonstrating exactly what I was talking about. You're basically just drilling those in to the stud to emulate the toggle holding on to the sheetrock. Perfect. So now guys, all you have to do is, they got these nice quick button terminals right here. You can insert the speaker wire right into there and it holds on and your speaker will literally just click right into place as I'm about to demonstrate. Oh, and one other thing, they actually make this pretty cool design where you can like hang it on the wall to kind of hold it while you're making your connections. Not 100% necessary, but it is a cool little, little feature there. Then you can spin it around, put your wire under the wall, and hook your speaker right into place, like that. But you're not done. You need to grab your drill. Always use a level. You want it to be level with earth. And then these toggles will really clamp onto the sheetrock nice and hard. You can actually see the, the speaker suction to the wall and you just don't want to over torque it. Once it's completely nice and level and all four screws are tight, you know that as this woofer is excurting, it's not going to jiggle loose and come out of the wall. You can go ahead and insert your grill 
right over. Now, there's two grills that come with this, a paint grill, as well as the magnetic grill that is the finished product. I'm gonna show you the difference between the two. Now guys, these are the two grills that I'm talking about. You have the finished grill, which is what you have after you're done. And these are paintable, guys, so you can paint them any color you want. Just make sure you have a professional do it. Don't take a roller to it or a paintbrush. You're just gonna clog it up, and then I'm gonna have to send you new ones. So make sure you either you spray paint at a very far distance, nice and easy, take your time with it, or hire a professional to water down the paint, because the standard, uh, standard paint, like you use the, the paint that was put on this wall, it's thick, and it'll just clog it right up, and uh, we're gonna have to send you a new one. Now, what I actually recommend is you do it in a couple steps. This is called a paint grill, so you can actually cling this right onto the speaker, and then you can have your sprayer come in, your, your painter, with a, a spray gun, which is gonna give you better coverage, and then you can just spray the whole wall down. And I'll show you exactly what I mean over here on this speaker behind me. So this is the paint grill, like that, and you can see it completely covers it, and then you can just spray the whole wall down, and when you're done, pop the grill off. And this is the finished grill. A lot of my customers just leave it white, but again, it is paintable and it just clings on like that. It gives you a nice clean finish to where the speakers just disappear right into the wall. So we're going to continue on with this process, doing that to the center as well as our ceilings and rear. Okay guys, so we went ahead and got our fronts cut in. We didn't want them to go as close to your level as possible, so we cut them downwards. The next thing that we're going to do is check center of the room and get that marked out so we can get our center speaker cut in, as well as check the height of the screen itself. So this is our center mark, guys. That's actually a really important measurement for two reasons. Uh, one reason, because we need to get that center speaker put in right in the middle so that aesthetically it looks nice, but also we're gonna use that same measurement for the projector. That projector has to sit dead center of the projector screen and also close to the top of it. If not, you end up with a keystone. Now this projector does have lens shift, but you still want to make that measurement as precise as possible. So um, I'm going to go ahead and check our studs and see where the studs line out in relation to uh, the center of the wall. So we got 105 right here. Okay, and then step finder, right there. And then we got 77 inches is the, 77 and a quarter is the total height of this screen. So we, we want it almost all the way to the top, 77 inches bringing it all the way down to about right here on the wall. So we got a little mark right here. So the center figure's gonna have to go right here to here. And in order to get that cut into the wall, we need to be sitting on 16 inch uh, center. So, luckily we have a stud here, and then we have another stud over here, which is very fortunate because that's actually center of the wall. So our template will work for this situation. All right, we are now moving on to the in-ceiling speakers. As you can see, uh, Juan is currently tracing out the cutout template. And it's important to note that the stud is on the left-hand side, so you always want to cut to the right. If you end up cutting to the left, you're going to be in a very uh, a bad situation where you got to do seat rock repair. So always just make sure to pop that box out, like I said, guys, and then trace it out and cut it, and it'll be very simple.
All right, guys, this is the projector we're going to be using. This is the Epson Pro Cinema 4050. Uh, probably one of the best selling projectors this year. It does do e shift 4K, not native 4K, but it does have 18 gig ports on it. And it does a really nice job of pixel, ship pixel shifting that 4K content. See, it's a sharp looking projector. It does come with the projector mount from Chief, which is specifically designed for the unit. See, it bolts right up. It also includes a little drop down pole, which we're gonna have to put an extension on this one anyways, but, and top plate, and then a back cover. Now, some of the perks to this particular projector is that this unit does come with a three year warranty versus a one year. It also comes with the projector mount, and it comes with a spare bulb. So it's pretty much maintenance free for the first five years. Great little projector. We're gonna go ahead and get this uh, top plate bolted into the ceiling right up here. And then we'll start putting together our screen. All right, guys, I did want to take one moment and talk about surge protection. Surge protection is very inexpensive and can save you a bunch of money down the road. If you do not do surge protection, um, you're kind of just running the risk of um, not only noise in your line, but you're also going to run the, the risk of getting hit by lightning and ruining your brand new equipment. So make sure you pick up a quality surge protector. This is going to be for the sub and the projector, as well as all the devices in the closet. Okay, so we are about to mount the projector and what we're doing is checking where the stud is. We are very, very, very lucky that the stud is on the left hand side and we actually measured from this wall over here, over, and the measurement of the center of where the projector is going to be, which is 105 inches, is actually exactly right on that stud. So what we're going to do is mount our top plate into that stud so the projector lens at the center of the screen. Now, whenever you're into the stud, it should feel like the drill should feel like the drill's about to break your wrist. If you go to put it in and it feels like butter, you're probably not into the stud. And you want to be dead center of that stud. Now these Epson projectors they actually come with uh, the proprietary mounting bracket from Chief that is designed for the unit. We did sell the customer this extension rod separately. I recommend utilizing an extension rod if you have a vaulted ceiling like this, because if not, again, you'll end up with a keystone. You wanna drop the projector down, I would say about 15 degrees from the top of the uh, screen so that you get a nice square image. Okay guys, so now we're gonna be mounting the projector. The top screws right here actually just hook right into place and then you lock it. Pretty. Pretty good design, honestly. Very easy to mount, even with just one person like this. Up and in, and then it's not secure until you actually slide that lock into place. And then I always just lock it like that and take the key out so it can't, can't come off the ceiling. At that point, you're good to go. You can go ahead and run your lines, power cord as well as the HDMI's. And we're going to be using one of these cat cables as a IR sensor for our Harmony remote system. If you guys are an out of state customer, you'll see me recommend the Harmony because it's super user friendly, puts you in control of your system. You don't have to call a professional. You can easily and quickly make programming changes right from your phone or tablet. Okay, so we have our projector up there. We got all the wires bundled nice and neat right there. It is a little bit further back than where it was pre-wired, but it's okay. We're into the stud, and we got this back plate cover on there with all of our wires hidden. It's looking really good. We're gonna go ahead and get it wiped down and then move on to our projector screen. Bend this side down. Pretty cool thing Dragonfly does. Uh, this is the top and bottom mounting bracket. They put a little piece of plastic or fabric between the two so you don't have to measure it out. I think that's pretty cool. It saves a little bit of time. It also has these locking tabs here that lock it into place. All right guys, once you get everything unboxed and laid out, there's these corner brackets. There's four of them. Very simple design. Solid steel brackets that go in each of the four corners. And these little screws that are provided screw right in and there's uh, one other thing that you need to make sure you do prior to fully securing your brackets into place and that's putting these along the marked locations this is actually where the screen is going to tab tension onto the frame 
roll it out like that. This is the back, it's marked right there on the corner. And then these rods right here, slide down right on this side, this side, and that side, okay, just like that. So the, the, these ones can be kind of tough because of the wall right here. So if you can um, open up this corner for me, right here. You guys can see where I put the tape up there, marks the studs. I did that while the guys were getting everything unboxed for the screen to save a little bit of time. Again, like I said, I really like the way the Dragonfly has these on here. You know, it's the little things as a professional installer that make your life a lot easier um, that you really appreciate, you know. All right, once you ensure that everything is level on the top and the bottom, you get your screws screwed into the center of the studs, you're gonna be ready to go ahead and mount it, which is what we're gonna be doing next. Just hooks right on the top. Like that. And then you actually have to kind of push it up and on to the bracket. So one person gets on the ladder up top and you kind of push up and then the other person pushes up and on to the bracket at the same time. Ready? Set. On there? Hang on. to make an adjustment. Uh, sometimes the tabs that they provide are a little bit uh, too saggy, I guess, or they sag a little too low. So we're just gonna tweak it up about a little less than, between an eighth and a quarter of an inch. Okay, so this happens to me quite frequently with these Dragonfly screens. See, now that I left a little bit of slack in it, it should allow us to, to get it to pop into place, but we'll see. Yeah, so that lock feature right there, that's so kids can't just come up and pop it off and it fall on them. It's pretty important that you have it locked into place because if not, it's just kind of hanging there. You definitely want to make sure that it's nice and secure. Next thing we're going to do is check to make sure that it is level uh, with earth and then that it's centered on the wall. Looks like we need to scoot it a little bit that way. All right, this is the game room. You can see the guys are doing a great job of getting these installed. We already got one popped in and then over here, we got the next hole pretty much cut out. We're gonna pop the speaker right into place. We're using the Pro 16 RC, same ones that we're using in the theater room. And this is the bracket right here. Alrighty guys, so we are moving on to connecting the receiver. This is where all the wiring terminates. You can see it's all 16-2 wire. Basically, what I'm going to be doing is stripping all of these back, like so, and then I'm going to be using a toner. You can pick this up for about $70 at Home Depot, and it makes your life a lot easier. Uh, basically, you just press the tone button. It's positive to, or black to black, red to red and then the tone comes out of the other line. You can hear it over there going off. So basically you just go around the entire room and you figure out where your speakers are in the room and align them appropriately on the back of the terminals of the receiver.
With Dolby Atmos, audio can precisely move in any direction in this theater. Whether the sound sweeps from the back, it's all the way in front, marks overhead, almost anywhere in this room. So then, you will feel every direction. Pass that sound. What do you think? That is something. <laughs> Pretty awesome, huh? It is. Especially when you, when it does come up on the above speakers on that uh, stuff. Yeah, and you hear the, the overhead effects. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, guys, so we just ran our first demo and it sounded pretty good. I did make a couple tweaks to the center, uh, as well as our bass crossover. That moved it from 120 down to 80 hertz, just to get us a little deeper in our frequency response on the crossovers. Um, as well as I made a tweak to the overhead highs, um, but uh, now it's sounding really good. Really what you want guys in a quality sound system is that clarity in the dialogue. When the person's speaking, you want that to come through crystal clear, but you also want to hear that sort of the surround effects whipping through the room combined with that deep heart pounding bass. So I'm going to play the demo again and you guys should be able to tell the difference in the quality of the audio system. Precisely move in any direction within this theater. Whether the sound sweeps from the back, to all the way in front, marks overhead, almost anywhere in between. Today, you will feel every direction. How does that sound? particular projector performs very well at a very reasonable price point you got a 2400 MSRP on that guy and I mean this is being streamed off of YouTube and you have pretty good definition uh, in the character's face and I'll just continue to play a demo so you guys can see it with the lights on as well as what you just saw a moment ago which was with the lights off this high contrast gray material does produce a pretty good image. Uh, it's not necessarily an ALR screen, ambient light rejecting, but it is uh, designed to perform a little bit better with ambient light because it does absorb more light into the fabric, uh, giving it better contrast. Good, let's put that guy. 
and we're gonna go ahead and put a Blu-ray on to show the maximum image quality. All right guys, so in addition to the theater room on this particular project, we're also doing lighting control. We're doing the Lutron cassetta system throughout the entire home. And that's gonna give the customer the ability to independently control every single light in the home right from their phone, no matter where they are in the world, as well as allow them to set schedules for lighting to come on and off at certain times of the day. Uh, we basically replaced all of the dimmers or about 30 of the dimmers throughout the home so that they control those particular sets of lights. It's a very affordable and easy way to automate your home. Uh, they're only about 60 bucks a switch and it controls an entire cluster of lighting inside of your home or it could just be one particular bulb. Um, but you can also integrate that into like Alexa or your Harmony uh, remote like we have up in the theater room which makes it really nice for the customer. Um, one other thing that we're going to be doing uh, in addition to the theater room is the Sonos amps and the Sonos amps will give the customer independent zone control over the patio, the game room, and the master bath right now and it is expandable so that they can have the entire home going all at one time in the future or independently play music to every single room. These are the amps that we're using. These are the new 125 watt per channel Sonos amps that were just released this year. And you can see I got Grayson here with me now, helping us out here yeah. today. Decided uh, to show up. <laughs> yeah, he finally decided to show up and help us. Um, but we have the connections here, which he's already stripped back the wiring and is preparing to have it connected into each individual amp. This is for his surround sound later. Yeah, the living, the room, living room is wired for a 5.1 system, which we aren't going to be utilizing today, but it is something that uh, the customer has available to him whenever he's ready. Yep. Now, um, we're also going to be taking audio out of this unit here using ARC into the Sonos system because the customer has some CDs that he'd like to integrate into the system so he can select the audio that, like you say, you have a CD in here. You can select that to play through the Sonos and then group it to whatever room in the home that you'd like. We also mounted this TV up on the wall here. Actually, Grayson did that. Looks really good. Um, so let me show you the other two rooms where we've done in-ceiling speakers. This is another room where we did install some in-ceiling speakers for the customer. We did the Klipsch, the Pro Reference Premier, the Pro 16 RPCs. Believe it or not guys, you spend a lot of time in your bathroom every morning and every night. Um, and it's really nice to have audio in that room. I use my bathroom speakers religiously every single morning, every night. And another cool little feature that Sonos has built into their uh, software is an alarm. So I have my alarm actually wake me up every morning and um, you can automate it however you'd like, but it's a little feature that's really cool. In ceiling recessed in here tied back to the Sonos amp and we got one more zone out here on the patio. All right, here's an example of more switches. You guys can see we did do quite a few in this home. And out here on the patio are the in ceilings that we put in. Now we did the episode, the episode uh, 350 series all weather speakers so these are actually designed to withstand the elements of the hot texas heat or if you're up north the extreme cold weathers um, as well as all the humidity so and we highly recommend using the correct speakers as well as tvs um, whenever you're doing outdoor installs that way it will ensure that throughout the life of your speakers or television that they last and if something does go wrong that they're covered under warranty which is uh, for us you know that just gives the customer that peace of mind uh, so that they don't have to worry and uh, continue to replace the unit if you guys have seen our other videos and if you're a subscriber you've probably seen we've replaced a lot of equipment that has gone bad that was indoor rated that the customers did put outside um, and I think that's about it. Grayson's working on getting those up and running and I'll show you guys what it looks like here shortly. All right, this is the location where we put in the Sonos amps. You can see there's three powering up the three rooms. And then we got the customer's devices up here connected as well. And then this is the TV that we mounted up on the wall. Back in this room, we mounted this TV as well and hooked everything up down below. Now, I just want to show you guys how the interface works. You can come in right here to the phone and hit play. And the music starts playing. The 
Now, what's really cool with Sonos is you can independently play that music. So you can say, I'm just going to turn the volume down as an example, but you could turn the game room off and turn the master or turn the patio off and just have the master bath going. And right here is where you would remove those from the group. So it'll actually throw it away. So then you can play different music, say on the uh, game room, I can have this song going in there. And then something completely different going on the patio, this song. So now you can see there's three different things playing all at the exact same time. Pretty cool. Let me uh, show you the patio. So I can come right here. Looks like the patio is currently playing. I'm just gonna turn the volume up a little bit. And just like that, you can stop it. Now I'm gonna show you the game room. And the customer has the ability to expand on this in the future, guys, so he can have the living room paired together as part of the system. And you can even get the portable speakers. So like, say the office or the dining room or whatever, you want some speakers in there, you can just get the little Play 1 or Play 5 and plug it in, and then that room would be another zone that you could play your music to. Game room, volume up. You get the idea. It is very simple and very intuitive and easy to use, which is what we go for here at Dream Media. So that is an overview of the distributed audio system as well as the TV mounts. And here's one more TV that we mounted right here behind me. Alrighty guys, well that is a wrap. We just finished up this theater project and everything turned out awesome. The customer is extremely satisfied as well as I am. We did do the complete automation system for the home, including the Lutron Cassetta, as well as the Nest thermostats and the multi-room audio for streaming his Sonos to his game room, his patio, and his master bath. And in addition to that, we mounted three TVs. So it was a busy day, uh, but we got it all done. The theater room, the configuration that we're doing is a 5.1.2 uh, Klipsch system. And we have the two 50s here to the front left, front right, center. I got that beautiful SPL 120 down here, ported woofer. Everything turned out great. I left the grills off so you guys can see them. I got the 145 uh, inch Dragonfly high contrast gray screen here mounted up on the wall, looking really sharp. And then overhead, I got the uh, 16 RCs. And then I got the 16 RWs here behind me, which I'm gonna spin the camera around and show you. Here overhead, we have our in ceilings right there and there. Our projector, which is surge protected. And then here, close this closet door. You got our in walls and the horns are rotated towards our seating area. And then all of our equipment's terminating in here. You can see we have the Harmony, or actually the uh, yeah Logitech Harmony down there. We have the Integra DRX 3.2 powering everything up. We got a 800 uh, series Sony Blu-ray player version two with an Apple TV 4K. And there's our Cassetta uh, Smart Bridge Pro, as well as a network switch. We have everything hardwired in and surge protected. I'm gonna spin you back here to the front of the room. All right, and with this Harmony remote, guys, you do have the ability to, with one button press, control all of your devices. Right now, we just have Apple TV and Movie. We also integrated in the lighting control so he doesn't have to get up. He can control his sconces right from the remote control system. Um, so that's an overview of what we did here today. I hope that you guys found this video informative in setting up your home theater. And if you guys would like to purchase a home theater product, we continue to make these videos. You guys continue to call us and place your orders. We'll do our best to help you out with a consultation over the phone. It really means the world to us. Now, if you guys do like this video, make sure you give me a big thumbs up and don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below so you can see all of our videos as soon as we release them. Well, guys, this is it. I hope that you enjoyed it. And until next time, this is Zach. Take it easy. Yeah.